and Hurst goes through on his own. The legacy of England's 1966 World Cup triumph will live long in the memory, but it's leaving another legacy too. At least three of the winning team were diagnosed with dementia. The question is, did football contribute and were heading heavy balls to blame? Today, a new study commissioned by the FA answered one of those questions, but not the other. Yes, professional footballers were more likely to die of the condition, but we still don't know if heading footballs was a factor. The truth is we understand a number of known risk factors for dementia um, and we don't understand anything about heading and whether it's actually a risk. The, the study doesn't tell us anything about that. What it did find was that between 1900 and 1976, five times as many professional footballers died of Alzheimer's disease than the general population. Four times as many died of motor neurone disease and twice as many from Parkinson's, but fewer died of heart disease and cancer. All of them were former professional players. Many are left wondering whether this is now a game changer for football. Not quite, say charities. Actually nothing that came out of this study would indicate that you have to change the game. The FA have reissued guidance around concussion, they've reissued guidance around the safe heading of football, so they've basically reissued their safety guidance. They should be followed, but there's no evidence to indicate that we really need to change the game, that the fo football is played either professionally, amateur, or, or with amateur footballers, or at the grassroots. That's not the view of the family of former England and West Bromwich Albion centre forward Jeff Astall. After his death, the coroner said repeatedly heading a heavy football contributed to brain damage. Astall's family led the campaign to establish the link between multiple blows to the head and problems experienced by so many ex-players. Today they got some of the answers they wanted, but were angry it had taken so long. It's taken my family to bring this to the fore. The responsibility of this should never, ever have been on our shoulders. But it was because the PFA and the FA swept it under a carpet for nearly 16 years. The focus now is to identify and reduce the risk to a future generation of footballers.